Now, in order to prove the concept, you see the operations is here, but it shouldn't be appeared. So I click close. And now, as you notice, the assigned purposes for this hierarchy is not being shown. If I refresh it, now you see that it's added as part of a procurement and internal control. You can have multiple policy purposes to be added in here. So up to here, we made the organizational hierarchy and we explained very high level in regard to the policy. But in order to wrap up this conversation, we have to see how does it work. I jump the gun, I go to the procurement and sourcing, even though I haven't set up anything, is irrelevant, I can set up the policy early on. There is a menu item called policy under the setup. And if I go to the purchasing policies, you notice that this is shared across legal entities. I can create a brand new one. For example, I call it SRHQ, and that would be purchasing policy. Just shorten it. You notice a few things. There are so many different rules out of the box. So it would be beneficial as a functional consultant to get acquainted with these policies first, understand it, practice with it. And then when you talk to customers or your colleagues in a company, you could benefit from existing policies out there. But prior to that, let's take a look at the policy organization. And that would be interesting. As you notice, by default, there is an organizational hierarchy called company. But that is causing another conversation here. As you notice, if I go back to organizational hierarchies in a different tab, you don't see company here. They are alphabetically listed. So what is this company all about? That's a built-in hierarchy that Microsoft automatically gives you and you have no control over. And any legal entity that you're making automatically would be included as part of this specific hierarchy. You have no control over this. So that's a given. And for those people that are not familiar with creation of organizational hierarchy or purposes or whatnot, automatically you could just go create a policy based on a legal entity and get it over with. So Microsoft made it a lot easier for people with lack of knowledge in regard to hierarchies and purposes out there. As you notice, those two hierarchies that I've added it in here are not being shown. So what do we do? There is a parameters here. And as you see, the hierarchies that I've picked up as part of my session are being listed here. There are candidates to be chosen for this policy. So I can pick and choose both of them or one at a time. Again, that's one of those specific graphical bug that should be fixed. I add one at a time, let's say. And then pretty much you notice that you can have a precedence of order. I would like to make sure SRHQ would be the first rule of the hierarchy to be applied. And perhaps store by region would be the next one and the company would be the last one. So you take a look at this one first. If it doesn't match it or it's not going to be suggested, you can use another one, so forth and so on. This basically assigns the precedence for all the rules. However, you can break it up by clicking on the policy rules type parameters and that automatically gets inherited here. Like, for example, if I go to category access policy rule, you could say I would like to make the company to be the second one. Whereas this one automatically has the previous one that has been inherited. On the catalog policy rule, I can basically make the company to be at the top. This is, again, one of those bugs. Don't worry about it. That it shows it twice, but it's going to be okay. So it actually shows the companies at the top, SRHQ at the bottom, etc. So you can define which precedence for each rule is going to be applied. When I click close, 